Today we're meeting with artist Tanya Hollander, an artist who began her career as a landscape photographer, but who since 2011 has been on a mission to photograph all 626 of her Facebook friends in their homes and take their formal portrait. She's titled the project, Are You Really My Friend? and has been traveling all over the world visiting friends, acquaintances, and people she barely knows. Right now we're in North Adams, Massachusetts at the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, where she'll be displaying the completed project in 2017. We're gonna be talking with Tanya about ideas of friendship and what that means in this, the age of social networking. So let's go meet Tanya and see what kind of challenge she has for us. Hi, I'm Tanya Hollander, and this is your art assignment. For me, when I'm in that state of mind of photographing the landscape, it's a really quiet place and a really serene and alone place, whereas the portraits are almost the exact opposite. Um, they are about uh, the spaces that people live in and all of the things that they collect and surround themselves with. Um, and they're about sort of creating that community in an internal way instead of an external way. I was home alone on New Year's Eve of 2010. I was instant messaging a friend who was working on a film in Jakarta on Facebook, and at the same time I was handwriting a letter to a friend who was deployed in Afghanistan. And I started thinking about those two friendships and how they were from really different parts of my life, but both people were important to me, and also the two ways of communicating, um, and how the handwritten letter felt much more personal, but it was really amazing that I was able to connect with this friend so far away online. So I just started thinking about friendship and relationships in 21st century and how things are changing because of the internet, but how things are also staying the same, and if that is something that's photographable. One of the things that I'm thinking about and that I thought about at my exhibition at the museum was how to bridge the analog versus digital gap in, in transferring this project that had only existed online into something that could exist in a museum setting. And I was so excited about the collaborative aspects of social media, of people being able to comment on photographs and have this conversation about what real sh friendship meant um, on my Facebook page, on, my, on the project's Facebook page with strangers from all over the world, that I wanted to bring that element somehow into the museum setting. And so I designated a wall with post-it notes that people could write in, um, what they thought a real friend was on a post-it note and then literally posted on the museum wall. Since that time, I collected all of these post-it notes um, in the museum of what people thought a real friend was. And then I've also collected them whenever I do lectures and have other exhibitions. So now I've got these post-it notes from all over the world um, in different languages, uh, different color post-it notes um, about what people think a real friend is. and. That, to me, has become a really important part of the project. Your art assignment is to make a formal portrait of a friend, um, and you can define friend however you want and uh, place however you want. And as an added bonus, I would love for you to send me a post-it note written in pencil of what you think a real friend is. You know what Tanya's project reminds me of is all those eccentric uh, travel books where people go on these quests. Like right. my favorite one is playing the Moldavans at tennis. Have you ever read that book? Uh, this guy, no, no. this guy Tony Hawks, he goes. The skateboarder? And, not the skateboarder. No, that's Tony no. Hawk. Okay. This is Tony Hawks. Got it. Got it. Two Hawks. Yeah. Anyway, he plays the entire Moldavan national soccer team at tennis. Okay. It's great. Really good book. All right. So if we could transition this to a discussion about photographic portraiture, that might be good. <laughs> Um, so if we want to think about this topic, I mean, it really goes back to the beginning of photography itself. Right, and people took portraits as soon as they were photographs, right? But like back right. then, you had to like sit really still. You had to do like your blue steel for a long time, like. Right, well, cameras tended to be bigger and harder to lug around, and there were longer exposure times necessary. You still do, stop. I'm still doing no, my blue no, steel. Please, please stop. Anyway, so in the 20th century, more and more photographers started to get out of the studio and into the world with lighter cameras, shorter exposure times, and to do more intense, ambitious photo series. Oh, like uh, August Sander, people of the 20th century? Yeah. That like is one August, of my favorites. Yeah, August Sander for sure, and Robert Frank, and Lisette Modell, and lots of interesting photographers. Another epic photographic road trip was Robert Frank's The Americans. He began traveling around the U.S. in 1955, 
documenting a wide swath of American life. We see cars, open stretches of road, diners, media consumption, and flags, signs of the flourishing of post-war American consumer culture. But Frank's style differs considerably from Tanya's, whose systematic approach and careful framing might call to mind German photographer August Sander's series, People of the 20th Century. Beginning in the early 19-teens, Sander attempted a comprehensive record of his country's people, taking hundreds of portraits of German citizens and categorizing them by occupation, making what he called a physiognomic image of an age. Sander wasn't the only one who believed the spirit of the time could be read in people's faces, an idea that would prove to be problematic in the turbulent and traumatic years to come. But his riveting photographs, like Tanya's, put you in direct eye contact with his subjects, offering the feeling of familiarity despite the distance of location or time. Tanya's project is also a reflection of its time, taking you into the intimate domestic spaces of her digital friends and giving you access to information not often apparent when viewing, say, a Facebook profile. I always do a self-portrait when I hit the road. <laughs> we are going to photograph Denise Markonich, who uh, is not one of my Facebook friends. Two miles. Then turn right on Harris um, Street. But she's curating my show at Mass Mocha, and I think it's important that she's part of this project. Hi. Hi. For me, what a formal portrait is, is um, really paying attention to the space around the person. And I think that's sort of the difference between the, the snapshot. Um, I'm very calculated of what I include <laughs> in the frame. Um, and I try and get the light just right, as well as all of the cool things that people have in their house, or lack of things, which I also find really interesting. Who has tons of stuff and who doesn't have um, that much stuff? and how that defines the person's um, personality and environment. I think you can almost tell more about a person by the things around them. Um, and then also the aspects of formal portraiture is they're sitting still and they're paying attention to the camera and not other distractions. I decided when I was gonna start shooting that a real friend is somebody that you share a meal with, that you invite into your house, that um, you argue about art or politics, um, drink a little too much red wine, and then you're still friends in the morning and it's all fine. <laughs>